Um, okay, once again, guys, the theme of this video, D4 against everything. D4 against everything. So let's see what our opponent wants to play here. And we've been seeing D5 more often than not. Um, so wouldn't be too surprised if he plays D5. Yep. And there's other options too. I could play the Cole system and, and go F3, but we're going to stick with C4. C4 is an excellent opening system. It's very structurally sound. You're not going to get yourself into too much trouble. There's not a lot of traps there. Um, unless you try, of course, unless you're playing against black, you do have that Queen's Gambit trap where you end up winning a minor piece. But as for black, their their tries aren't really as, as fruitful, I would say. Um, you're not going to see those same types of tactics. So, yeah. C4, and our opponent is taking his time. Oh, the Slav. Very nice. Um, I do have a tricky little line here where I play bishop f4 and actually sacrifice the piece and take back. But let's let's play let's play principled chess and just go with knight to f3. The fun part about the Queen's Gambit, if you're a beginner and you're learning chess, is that you can almost always play d4, c4. You're in great position, right? So mm, I'm not opposed to to turning this into... <sighs> yeah, why not? Let's turn this into the, the Slav exchange structure. And, and we're going to basically base our ideas around the c file. Notice the c file is an open file. Our goal right now is to castle as quickly as possible and get our rooks onto the C file. We want to create a battering ram. We want to completely own this little C file, right? This C file is the whole point of the game. This is this is the contention. This is where this is where the money is made, right? Um, so you can take. Um, I could have snuck my bishop out to F4. I've been playing a more conservative style where my bishop stays on d2, um, kind of avoiding these 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 pinning variations, uh, because of course there's no real need to pin when bishop d2 is playable, and I don't like the idea of putting my bishop on f4 and pointing it at nothing. So you see, like I would be a lot more nervous about the pin here, but it doesn't really do much. This bishop here on d3 feels kind of good. Especially because he blocked off his bishop. I think I know where this bishop's going to go. I think it's going to go right here on d3. The pin, like I said, the same exact reason why I'm not afraid of this pin on b4 is the same reason I'm not going for this pin on b5. Because the bishop can just block and and he's just going to beat my bishop around. There's just, there's just no point. There's no point there. And he doesn't go for it either. So, so we're both on the same page. Let's go ahead and castle. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and castle. And we're going to have to figure out how you want to play certain certain ideas. Um, we're a little nervous about this queen, queen to h4 move with the bishop eyeing down h2. Um, and even the knight going to g4, attacking h2. So there, there are possibilities here. He, he's got a very interesting attack, and I actually like his position a bit more than mine. Um, we'll see if our opponent wants to castle here, however. Um, I think castling castling is correct. Um, okay. Final piece to develop is that bishop. Where does the bishop go? I suppose it goes on d2. And then we can start our second phase of the plan, right? So... We're going to go bishop d2. Well, wait a second. Do I want to attack this bishop first? Because I actually don't like this dark square bishop very much at all. If I play knight to b5, it kind of forces the bishop to move back to, to a much less active e7 square. And, and now I'm a little less afraid of this h2 threat. There's also the idea of trying to um, trying to go for this minority side, um, where we can try to promote on the A file, 
or open up the A file. I actually do like that idea here a lot, especially because the bishop is pointing in this direction um, of playing A4, eventually A5, and A6. And then bishop takes, bishop takes back. Um, it just, it, it could be, it could be quite good. Um, opening up another file for the rook. Um, let's let's keep it flexible. Let's play bishop d2. I have the idea of pushing up on the a file at my disposal, but I'm also not afraid to play rook c1 and and start making use of this open file on the c file. Um, and this is some knowledge that you can definitely use here, guys. Um, a lot of people they know that open files are for rooks, but they don't necessarily know how to take advantage of that. So in, in definitely at this level, I see I see a great possibility to to have a very very strong advantage. Now, one last thing I'm looking at here is that maybe this knight um, would like to be on b4. So something like a3 could be an interesting idea. Um, especially now that um, he's played b b6. Um, I'm wondering huh i'm wondering when that also this does this does leave room for him to play bishop b8 um and then maybe even queen d6 hmm all right like i said guys flexible i'm not too afraid of i i, I think his biggest threat is definitely the dark square diagonal it's it's a serious problem but i'm not necessarily i'm not necessarily terrified of that position um, I do see my queen on c2, rook on c1, um, here comes the bishop, kettled into nothing, so notice that this bishop is not going to be very strong in this structure, because his pawns are actually blocking it out, I think the bishop may have actually been much better pinning this knight, um, or even even trying to trade off this bishop and and using that dark square bishop. If this was just a dark square bishop game, I think he'd be in much better shape. So I think what I would like to do is play play rook c1 because I, I think this bishop's now misplaced. Um, I think this bishop is very misplaced. I like my light square bishop a lot more than his light square bishop. I like his dark square bishop a lot more than my dark square bishop. So another idea will be to trade off dark square bishops. Um, I like to call this a cozy bishop. I'm going to put this bishop right on b1. And it's going to open up ideas for maybe maybe a mating threat after queen to c2. But it could be a discovered attack on another piece as well. All right. It, it, okay, interesting. So he's looking for this c4 outpost, a very common idea in this structure. He has two outposts. He wants to use them. Um, maybe, maybe I have to admit that I played the wrong move here. I don't like that, but I, I might have to admit I played the wrong move. Um, I do like my light square bishop quite a lot, but, but I, I may have played the wrong move. Um, okay, maybe I did. Maybe I played the wrong move. I would have loved to try. Okay, fine. Um, bishop a2. Um, bishop a2. I don't love bishop a2, but I really do not want this knight on c4. One of the central ideas of the structure is to have your knights and even your bishop sometimes, your light square bishop, connected to this pawn on d5. Um, that's where they really want to be. So even though I was saying this bishop is extremely strong and, and one of my favorite pieces, um, it actually doesn't work for me in this situation. So, if this queen wasn't here, I would have the idea of sacrificing the knight. Not on this file, because opening it up would, would allow the rook to defend the knight. But sacrificing the knight on d5, and then this knight would be hanging. Uh, maybe if my queen was here, that would work. Um, oh, he wants to double up pawns. That's kind of mean. Um, that's a mean idea. All right, let's um, let's play. Okay, I should be able to chase that away though. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna reroute my knights. So I'm gonna go knight to e2. 
I'm suspecting that my opponent will play knight to c4 because if I take back in this situation, it's a problem because he's going to be able to get an, um, a pawn on the c-file. Uh, it's going to kind of foil my whole idea. My my whole my whole idea. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's a good idea. It sounds. But I'm actually going to try to... Hmm, the only problem, though, is that if I play b... B3, it's not really great either. Um, hmm. What do I do here? Do I just take and then immediately try to disrupt? I just don't like this bishop, honestly. Maybe I could force a trade of bishops. Um, no. No, nothing like that. Trade of bishops. But also, this piece is hanging. Okay. Um, where does he want to go? He wants to go here? If I go here, and the rooks come, the rook comes into play. Where does my queen go to the other side? I don't love that. Maybe, I, maybe I do just do it then. Maybe I do just, just take the knight. I allow him to take on c4, and it's not ideal for me. But, but he's probably gonna take back with the b pawn. Oh, okay. Um, I would have taken with a different pawn. Um, I don't want to lose this pawn here. Um, hmm. he's playing very well for a, um, for a 400. Maybe I, I definitely want to try to disrupt this pawn here. Interesting. No, I don't want to lose that piece. Maybe I could play. Hmm. Okay. Also, I don't really like the idea of, of losing this knight. Okay. Let's, um. Let's just go ahead and keep the structure together, get both my knights um, at the defense of the king. And in this situation, he does have a, a pawn majority on this side, and I do have to watch out for this. But we'll, we'll see what happens here, because I, I'm thinking of a b3 push. Yeah, okay, fine. Um, so where does the knight go in this situation? I'm cool, I'm cool with... Um, with him, with with him, um, oh, yeah. What's he gonna do? I I think I'm gonna open up. I might open up my F file, honestly. Um, I'm I'm double attacking his knight. I was thinking about taking, but I don't want to give. I don't want to give him access to the square. Um, frankly, I don't want to do that. Knight takes. Okay, cool. So fine with me. Knight takes back. I, I do have ideas of playing knight to knight to e4. I'm running low on time as well, so I have to start considering my options. Um, might want to start playing quicker. Okay. And keep in mind that if I do play my my b my b3 idea, it's not going to work as well because uh, bishop takes. Though uh, maybe it's maybe it's fine. Maybe it's actually fine because. Because bishop takes rook to a1. I don't love it. Sacrificing doesn't really make sense to me. Um, hmm. Let's go. Let's go. Let's get the rook out and let's let's try to push. Um, queen. Maybe the maybe the queen's gonna come to to g5. Maybe I should be a little worried about that. It's interesting because he never plays moves quickly. I've noticed. Like this, this move should be obvious. He'll just take back with the bishop. Why is he taking so long? I guess he has. He wants to decide which piece to take with. But it's really interesting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. I don't want this knight pins. Get the rooks out. Hmm. Wasn't expecting to play such an intense game to start, honestly. Um, we'll see what he decides. Yep. Yeah, okay. He's he's looking to um. He's looking to just take that pawn for free. What can I do here? This piece is, is defended kind of adequately. Um, hmm. And then what is 
does the knight want to go? I'm interested in where the knight wants to go, and I also I also don't even though this bishop's really strong, I don't like the idea of him doubling up my pawns um, in any capacity. Let's play this. No, that won't work. Fork could work. Yeah, let's fork. Let's get rid of this dark square bishop. Um, and then such low time. I'm wondering. I'm wondering what he wants to play here. Queen, queen f five attacks. It's so fascinating. He's um, he's really playing an interesting game for sure. Um, let's take. Let's take that bishop. Um, let's take the bishop, and then maybe queen to queen to e two would be nice. Queen to e two. Okay, interesting. That's a really good move. I, I, this is it's so weird. It's so weird. He's playing so weird right now. Um. Fine. What what I have to do because. I'm I'm genuinely convinced this guy might be using an engine. Um, I'm gonna play queen e4 and just go for a trade down. He's not gonna have enough time. He hasn't made one move like quickly. Like that move should be. Oh what the heck? You know what I'm saying? Like this is insane. That that's the correct. Yeah, this is so weird. Um, if he what's he gonna do? I'm gonna pin his queen. Um, rook. Oh no, man, this is so strange. It's gonna attack his pieces here. I'm just hoping there's not like a mate on the board. Hmm. Um, let's go here. Hmm. Rook, rook d6. Rook d6 should be interesting. He's running low on time. I think he should be able... I'm very interested in analyzing this game, that's for sure. Um, okay. I'm very interested in analyzing this game. I, I won't lie. We're, we're triple attacking this pawn. Um, he's very low on time. We're able to... We're able to go ahead and take... Check take and now i think we're gonna be in good shape um even now he's playing so slow like look how long he's taking to play his moves it's so weird and he's not even attacking the pawns i'm just i'm just moving back and forth he's taking five minutes to move Okay. Um I, I gotta be careful though not to um not to allow him to um Okay. Yeah, that was weird. 